For nearly five decades, Clear Creek High School has served as a cornerstone of our community, and we are excited because of the bond passing in February 2004 that Clear Creek High School will receive much needed school improvements, including new academic buildings and a front office facing 518. But let's flash back to 1956 and see how all the Clear Creek High School traditions began. One, two, three, five! The year 1956 witnessed many momentous events politically and culturally. President Eisenhower was re-elected to office. The Cold War between the U.S. and the USSR was escalating. The minimum wage was just raised to one dollar. The hula hoop made its debut and Elvis Presley performs on television for the first time. 1956 is also the year that Clear Creek High School first opened its doors, boasting an enrollment of 263 students, 24 teachers, a principal, and one secretary. Through the decades, League City has grown and Clear Creek High School has expanded with it. Let's journey back to the time before laptops and cell phones and reminisce about fads, fashion, and life at Clear Creek High School with a few of our resident experts, our teachers and students. And I believe the Elvis mu music was popular then. And they had the, uh, the record players, the little records, what were the 45s? And you could hear songs like, Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog and, and things like that on, on these records. And at the school dances, we had the school dance every, after every football game. And all the kids came to the school, all school dance and enjoyed themselves. And that was just one of the traditions. And they came and they behaved. There was no, never any problems there. But the, the whole the whole school body would be out there in the uh, student center located next to the girls' gym today. Let's see. We didn't have copying machines. We had those purple Ditto Master machines and that the kids loved to snip the paper. That was the big thrill. You know and mimeograph machines. Uh, report cards were by hand. We had the turntables, occasional tape recorders with the big reels of tape. There was enough grease in some of those guys' hair to, um, to lubricate an 18-wheeler's engine. And at times it got to the point that you couldn't tell whether it was a boy or a girl because in some cases the boys had longer hair than the girls did. They used to play a game in the patio, and you had uh, a game called Buck Buck that the kids played. It consisted of a very sturdy boy putting his hands on one of the trees, and the others piling up behind him holding on, and then other boys trying to jump on the line and knock the line down. It wasn't a very intelligent game and caused lots of injuries, but they played it every day. And back when I was teaching physics, uh, the Russians put a man into space and orbited the, the United States, I guess, and that kicked off our space uh, program. And somewhere down the line, Vice President uh, Lyndon Johnson managed to get the space center moved down to Clear Creek. Of course, in the 60s, Clear Creek was a really interesting place because all of the children of the original astronauts went to school there. And they were really celebrities in their own right and uh, I, we had Secret Service people on the campus to uh, at some times protect the children of the astronauts who might be uh, uh, in orbit at that time. My senior year at Creek, the, the class got together and painted these gigantic wildcat footprints all through the parking lot and on campus. It was pretty wild. In the 80s, it was all about the hair. In fact, I used to tell the girls when they'd stand in line to have their pictures taken, honey, you're not going to be able to get your head in the picture because it's going to cut off. And uh, the boys had wore parachute pants and, and odd outfits at that time. They look almost, you look back on them and they look almost like costumes now. And being a cheerleader, the tradition that they've had forever is varsity is the only team that's allowed to have megaphones, pom-poms, and wear the color gray. And I haven't heard of that tradition before, but here at Creek. I'm such a person that values morals, and I think in my opinion morals 
that I was instilled by by many of the members of Clear Creek High School has made me the person that I am today. From the classroom setting to the athletic setting to the teachers that took extra time outside of those two events, just to say hi going down the hallway, walking across the courtyard, going down the breezeway, out to my car, even at your friendly grocery store, teachers knew, you knew that the teachers had an impact in some way or another just for them taking the extra five minutes to say hi, how you doing? I think all of the things that we as students and as teachers have built throughout these years, the strength of our faculty, the intelligence and the diversity of our students, I don't think any of that will ever change and I would never want it to. I love the diversity of the kids and that to me is the most important thing. At different schools uh, you don't find um, as many different cultures, as many different economic areas. Um, the kids, uh, there is such a wide variety of kids, it's, um, it's a pleasure to teach. In 1957, a Clear Creek High School teacher named Paul Hervey wrote about the brand new League City High School. His words are just as relevant today as they were 47 years ago. May our school provide training and inspiration which will enable young men and women to face the problems of life with more courage and confidence and to solve these problems with greater wisdom and justice. As years bring succeeding generations of students to this school, may spiritual strength and moral stamina be zealously sought and increasingly gained by the young people of this school. Let us hope that the fullest development and realization for each personality will always be a goal for this institution. May the Clear Creek High School never be content with its level of attainment, but always seek means for improvement in developing physical strength and health, mental ability and vigor, moral character, social grace and poise, love for home, country and humanity, and reverence toward God. May this school inspire its personnel, as expressed by Horace Mann, to be ashamed to die until we have won some victory for humanity. <laughs>